Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. My guest today is Emily Sandusky. Emily, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Fantastic. Great to see you again. We've had a uh, had a uh, one one to one. Uh, easy for me to say. Uh, we're both in BNI, which is Business Networking International. So got to know each other. Ooh, it's probably a couple of months ago now. Yeah, it's and... been a little bit. Yeah, it was like I really enjoyed our conversation, and you know, I invited you onto the show today, and you have just an incredible story, and I would love to help you, you know, share your story, and um, you know, I have the 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 dual podcasts that I'm going to put it out on. It's so it it is a recovery story and an amazing one. So I'd love to give you the open floor just to tell everybody about you know what you've been through in your life, and then we're going to get into what you're doing as well because I think the work you're doing is incredibly important and heartfelt and all the rest so but let's start with yeah emily your story from as far back as you care to take it <laughs> that sounds good well thanks for having me i i know i really i just feel like we connected right off the bat so Definitely. um it's fun to continue to um to build on on and help support one another um but yeah so i am a cancer survivor i have had leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia, they call it ALL. Um, I was first diagnosed when I was five, almost six, um, which now like looking back at that as yeah. a parent of, I have seven-year-old twin boys now and looking back at that, I'm like, how in the world did my parents handle that? I have no idea. Um, but so yeah, I was diagnosed when I was five, almost six. I did two years of chemo um, and responded really well. I was actually able to continue for the most part as like a pretty normal kid. You know, I went to school, like there were definitely times they did not have all of the like anti-nausea drugs and all of that stuff that they have now. So, I mean, there were definitely times where it was not pretty, <laughs> um, and I wasn't feeling good, but for the most part, you know, I played soccer all through, all through growing up. And so I played soccer and I, the things and and really handled it well and so I went into remission remission uh, after those two years and was just on my way and was um off treatment for about three years and I actually hit that five-year mark which for cancer survivors that's like the years that you've been through the treatment plus the years you know after which is a mm. big deal um but then I relapsed right around that five-year mark when I was, um, when I was 11 and at like the end of fifth grade. And, um, it was really strange because I wasn't having a lot of like the typical symptoms. Like a lot of times with leukemia, you just, you're kind of getting sick a lot, you know, you, maybe not, you're, uh, you know, not recovering that kind of thing. And for me, I was having pain in my wrist mm. and they didn't know what was going on. They were like, well, maybe you, sprained it or broke it playing soccer or, you know, something like that. Um, but they did x-rays and MRIs and couldn't figure out what was going on. And then finally, just because of my history of having, having leukemia, um, they actually did a bone biopsy and that's when they found that, um, my leukemia had come back. And so mm -hmm. at that point they did some radiation local to that one spot on my wrist, and then also did two more years of chemo. Um, this time I was, you know, like right before teenage years, those awkward, awkward years. And then I lost all my hair. The first time oh. I didn't actually lose all my hair. I, it, it thinned, so we kind of cut it short, but I didn't lose it all. So this was my first experience losing my hair. And uh, I was so self-conscious. Um, and that was like probably, you know, I definitely got sick and things like that and wasn't feeling well and had to miss school and lots of shots and all that kind of stuff. But losing my hair at that time was for sure, um, traumatic. And so I, I wasn't really comfortable wearing wigs. That wasn't really my thing. So I did get a wig. I wore it twice and just felt like for me, it just did not feel right. So I usually would, would wear hats and, and things like that. And, um, but again, like for the most part was able to, you know, I played, I continued to play soccer. I felt pretty good. Um, I responded pretty well to the treatments for the most part. I mean, I did miss a lot of school cause I would have to go in, you know, for day long treatments and things like that. Um, but I didn't have to do a lot of like overnight in the hotel, I mean, in the hotel, we always end up calling it the hotel, the yeah. hospital. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I, again, like responded really well and went into remission, um, was again, offer 
about three more years. So looking at that five year mark. And then um, when I was um, in high school and my, my junior year of high school, I relapsed again. Mm. And this time was um, the way I figured it out was I was having really bad hip pain. Mm. And at first, again, they thought, well, maybe I'd injured myself or something. Um, but then what we figured out was with leukemia, it, what it is, is the, the white blood cells um, just don't get past that immature stage. And so they mm. just keep duplicating, duplicating, duplicating. Oh. So the pressure inside of like where my bone marrow is with what was causing the pain. Wow. Yeah, it yeah. was horrible. That and is. so at that point, once we finally got past that, it wasn't, you know, a fracture or something like that. Like I knew, I knew that that's what it was. Um, so yeah, we went in, they did like a bone by bio- a bone marrow biopsy. And, um, it was, it was just crazy because like I said, emotionally I knew. And so they put me under this like light anesthetic to do it. So I didn't have to feel the pain of bone biopsy. Cause I don't know if any of you guys have ever had that, but it's super painful. They stick mm-hmm. a big needle right into your hip bone. Eesh. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which when I was younger, they used to do all that without putting me under because they didn't Ooh. have that kind of technology. Sure. Yeah. My goodness. Um, so I was, I was grateful for that. But like, as soon as I woke up, I was just like a bawling mess because I was like, I just knew. Yeah. Um, and some of the, some of the nurses were like, thought that it was from the anesthesia, the anesthesia. Cause that can have that. I'm like, Oh no, I've had a lot of anesthesia. This is not from that. This is just because I know what I'm about yeah. to go through and it uh, sucks. Yeah. Um, so at that point they were really kind of like at a loss because they had gone through the more typical protocols. Um, and they're like, we don't know what to do. I mean, it's not that uncommon to relapse once with leukemia, but this was now my third time going through it. And they were like, you know, we don't know what to do. So they decided to do, we decided to do a stem cell transplant. Mm. And, um, so then we were looking for somebody that would be a good match for me. And I have three siblings. So those are the best possible, um, you know, match, like could be possible matches. And I was really lucky. My brother was actually a perfect match for me. Wow. Um, so I got, yeah, I got super lucky. The, um, the tricky thing about my brother is we, kind of had a feeling if somebody was going to be a match, it was going to be him. He is, he has special needs. He's on the autism spectrum and has dreads and ADHD. So just like helping him understand, he kind of understand that he understood like the big part of it that like mm. he was helping me, but trying to help him understand, you know, really what he's doing was, was tricky. The good news is with stem cell transplants, you just, it's just like drawing blood to get from him to, to give to me. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of process in between it, but it's not like a painful mm. process for him okay. versus uh, like if you do a bone marrow transplant where you have to take it from, you know, yeah. like I was saying that really painful process of from your hip. So, um, but he did great with it. And y- you know, even now he's like, I'm your hero, right? Em? <laughs> and I was like, of course. yes, <laughs> yeah. definitely, definitely are. <laughs> Um, so, so we did that process. I did amazing with the stem cell transplant. There's a lot of, uh, worry that sometimes your body won't receive it. Well, it'll kind of reject it. And so the scary thing about doing a stem cell transplant is they basically kill your entire immune system. So they gave me full body radiation. They gave me hardcore chemo for a couple of weeks to just basically get all your cells down to zero because they want you to rebuild with the new immune system from the new stem cells. Right. And so then I had to stay in like an isolated room in the, in the um, hospital to help keep me from getting, you know, infection exposed to infections and things like that. Um, but I was determined to get out of there as fast as possible. I remember asking the doctors and being like, okay, so what's the fastest you've ever gotten someone out of here? And he, at the time, I don't know what it is now, but he had said 21 days. Mm. And so I will be out of here in 21 days. And I was on the like day I was 21 days. I was out of there. Um, but I still couldn't go back to school or anything because they wanted to make sure that I, um, you know, wasn't exposed to stuff in school is is definitely, you know, a germy place. (laughs) Sure is. Yeah. (laughs) So, and I, this was like, you know, way before we were used to wearing masks and things, things like that. And so I had to like, if I did go somewhere, I had to make sure I was going like, if I had to a mall or something during 
you know, off hours. And then I wore this like really intensive, like mask that had this like filtration system mm. and I was bald and because I lost my hair again this time. And so I felt like I was like an alien. I felt so like self-conscious. <laughs> I was like, um, people probably wonder what the heck is wrong with her. Yeah. Um, Right. But yeah, but, but I responded great to the stem cells. They were, they were regenerating. And the interesting thing about like being a woman and getting a man, a male, a, you know, transplant, they could actually tell which cells were mine versus wow. others. Sure. Um, so they could see that they were, you know, they were rejuvenating. My brother thought that maybe I would become a clone of him. But... <laughs> Wishful thinking, eh, for yes, on his part. Thinking, yeah. That did not happen. <laughs> right <laughs> oh, that's funny yeah um but so yes yeah, so I couldn't go back to so this was my last year of high school that I was going into and I couldn't go back to school until a couple months in so they just had someone that would like basically just drop off my school work and things like that and I pretty much just had to like self-teach myself because the person that was dropping the stuff off didn't really know I was in a lot of like advanced math classes and things like that and they didn't really know how to do that stuff so it was pretty, right. pretty much like here it is good luck wow <laughs> wow yeah yeah <laughs> jeez um but that time was I I was at that point like got was getting more used to being like bald and not caring as much so mm. like at school once I finally did go back to school I would just walk around bald and just be like here I am like everybody knew what was going on um the one of the most frustrating things for me at that point was the soccer piece because I was really at like the height of playing and starting on the varsity team and all those things. And, um, I was just, mostly I couldn't play because my, my blood cell counts weren't good enough that they were, didn't want me to get like hit and not, you know, bruise and all that kind of stuff. Um, but then even like my, I mean, my coaches and my team, they were so amazing, but like when I was allowed to play, you know, they would put me on the field, but I was, my body was so physically, exhausted mm. that it's not like I was really playing to you know to my capacity and so you know in high school when you're like that's like your world or the things like that it was just so frustrating to be like yeah I can't actually like I'm here but I can't yeah. actually do the things that I want to do and I think that actually is a really big thing and actually for all recovery I'm sure but for my, from my experience with cancer, I think one of the biggest things I'm finding as I'm connecting more with the cancer survivor community is that, you know, you, they talk a lot about your support and your help in getting to the end of the treatment, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of talk about how much your body and physically and mentally going to go through after you're done with your treatment. Right with that recovery period. Sure. And so like, it was, you know, it's just so frustrating because you finish the treatment and you're like, okay, I'm moving on with my life. And then you don't realize it takes like a year ish or more. Um, and then, I mean, there's still effects that I deal with now, but, but so anyways, I, I, I did well with that, but then I went off to college. I went to Northwestern in, in Chicago and, um, the, the spring of my freshman year in college, I relapsed again. Yeah. And this was the, so this is the fourth and final time. Right. And, um, it, it occurred the same way, like the feeling in my hips where it was just like killing me. Yeah. So I tried to ignore it for a while. And then finally I was just like, Oh, it's just too painful. And, um, my sister was actually a senior when I was a freshman there. And so finally the pain just got so bad. And I'm like, Alyssa, you got to take me to the emergency room. Like, I can't deal with this pain anymore. It's like just all consuming. And so she took me to the, you know, to the ER and um, they didn't want to give me any pain medicine because they were like, oh, we, we got to make sure that you're not just like trying to seek, you know, painkillers. And I actually am someone that hates being on painkillers. Mm. So that is like furthest from what I was trying to do. But um but at first and my sister's like trust me if she's saying that she needs something like you gotta right. give it to her because this is not like yeah and then the next couple days was kind of a blur because I my parents came down got me they at the time we we lived like a my parents lived like a, about a five six hour drive they were in Michigan 
um, from where we were. And so they, they were actually planning to come down that weekend anyway. So they came, they got me. We just went straight back to the hospital where my doctor was. Um, but I had, um, one of the medications that they gave me to kind of kickstart my treatment. Um, I had a really bad, um, like neurological response to, Oh, yeah. And so I don't remember like almost like a week of oh, when wow. I was in the first, yeah. When I, yeah. I, I remember like little glimpses, like I remember mm-hmm. like them asking me like a few questions, like, can you count backwards from 20? Wow. And I'm yeah. Saying, like, yeah. I know I can, like, I know I know how to do this, but I'm like, why can't I do it? Wow. Um, and I, and then I say, say also told me some things that I said that I don't remember. Like, I remember they were like asking me like things about what, you know, questions about like where I went to college and like things like that. Mm -hmm. I guess I just kept answering with my last name, (laughs) which my maiden name is Yatsko. So they kept being like, I guess I would just say Yatsko to everything. Yeah. like every question which Tremendous. is not funny but like you know you have to yeah. laugh about it. right uh, right okay. for sure <laughs> and then like as my sister was like showing me pictures and I was like what I was like looking at them with my eyes closed and I was like these are really great <laughs> <laughs> oh man like you say I mean to look it's actually quite frightening you know at, at the time but you can look back on it and go oh, oh yeah goodness. yeah just... I can't even <laughs> imagine how my family was feeling but right but, like, I had gone into the um the hospital on a Friday and then when I finally kind of came to, it was a Saturday and my dad was sitting next to me and I was like, what day is it? And, mm. and he was like, it's Saturday. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I've only been in here for one day. Mm. And like, I knew that that like felt not right, but yeah. I like, did not realize it had been there for a week. Wow. And my dad yeah. just looked at me like, no, <laughs> you've been here for a whole week. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh what just yeah. happened. Right. So yeah, I definitely am lucky that I re- was able to recover from that because it was, I'm sure, like I said, my family was just <laughs> wondering if I was going to come back to myself. Right. Yeah. When you get to, especially because you hadn't had any precedent of that before. I mean, this is your fourth time yeah. and you hadn't had any like that neurological impairment, not to that extent anyways. No. Right? So it's no. like, are we, are, yeah, exactly. For are we going to get our, you know, our daughter back? Right. It's frightening. And and you not really not aware of what was going on. Like my goodness. Yeah. What, a, what a story uh, yeah, up to that point. Crazy. Yeah. And just so yeah, the age so they, of so, at that point, they just kind of like, threw stuff at me for two years. They didn't really have wow. like a particular regiment because they were just like, we really don't know. So they kind of gave me some of the like newer chemo drugs and things like that. And then um, at the time they had come out with this antibody treatment. I actually don't know where they're at with this treatment because hmm. um, I, that was a while ago, but at the time they were only doing it in Minnesota. Hmm. So my mom and I would go up there for like, a few weeks and we went once in the summertime and they gave it to me. And then, um, we went out once in the winter time, which, um, I wasn't a fan of going to Minnesota in the winter time because it never got above zero degrees, which was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, but, um, but they, we did that and then I did some other treatment and, um, I did have another couple like scary things happen that time. It was definitely the hardest on my body. Like I had Um, one, another medication that I had a really bad response to that I got like really bad diarrhea, which Mm. I know is not like a fun topic to talk about, but I never understood how like that could be so severe. And I ended up going, I ended up losing like almost 40 pounds, like a few week period. Whoa. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. And I was not like a big person to begin with. So I was like, looked like a skeleton. Like I actually like freaked myself out when I looked in the mirror. I was like, I was like, Oh my gosh. Um, but like slowly like that started coming back. And then I also had, um, while I was immunosuppressed, you know, your body just doesn't handle things the same way. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I also like my cheek, you can see is like sunken in right there. Mm. I had, um, a, this bad infection in my cheek that was just like growing, growing like this, like my cheek was like way puffed out. And they couldn't figure out what was going on. And they tried to give me like different antibiotics and different things and nothing was helping. And they were starting to see this redness of the infection, like spread down my neck and my chest. 
So they started like using a Sharpie and drawing lines to see if it was like spreading. And it was, it was just right. like spread. Wow. So they were really freaked out because it wasn't stopping. And so they finally um, went in like the middle of the night and did this experiment exploratory surgery they're like we don't really know what we're gonna find but we feel like we got to like investigate um they didn't know if they were gonna have to like remove stuff or whatever but all they found was there was some dead tissue inside of my um my sinus they're mm, like we have mm-hmm. no idea we just think it might have been some kind of cellulitis or something like that where you know but because you're so immunosuppressed your body like couldn't handle it yeah so they took that dead tissue out they opened up my sinuses but they didn't do any sort of like reconstructive anything Mm. Um, but once they did that they put two drains one here and one here and my Mm -hmm. neck and my chest and like then the infection just started like draining out and so the my cheek started getting back to um you know not so (laughs) puffy and then what they think happened is that the infection just fed on my um, on my like, you know, tissue and fat cells and like whatever was in there. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of changed the structure of not the bone, the bones all the same. It's just like the tissue and the soft, you know, like the soft tissue. And yeah. Stuff. yeah so wow. wild. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My goodness. And this is all, so it was like, so five, 11, 14 and 19 or those are the ages like 17 of, and 19 17 and 19 my yeah. goodness what an amount of things to go through so you know and uh, i'm wondering like you talked about the mindset you touched on it a little bit you know like happened to because i remember how i was and I remember even how friends were at like the ages especially like around 15 17 just getting really a lot more self-aware and with self-aware becomes a lot more self-conscious a lot more right. Yeah, based on like comparing myself to other people, right? Just getting that uncomfortable teenager phase. And you're like right in in that uncomfortable teenager phase, you're having, you know, bald and like the mask and so forth, right? So, you know, how has that, you know, I guess affected you? Like, how has that echoed into your adulthood as far as, um, yeah, I guess just the way that you view yourself and others and so, so forth and like how easy was that to sort of bounce back from? Um, yeah, I mean, those are all (laughs) a lot of good, good questions. Um, I mean, the mindset piece, it was kind of interesting. I mean, I think the mindset piece of like getting through it, Mm -hmm. um, came a lot from, you know, my family, my, my, my parents, especially like, it was just kind of like, you know, the initial piece was always like, well, this is, this sucks and this is awful and like all that. But then I was like, okay, what do we have to do to get, you know, get through this? And yeah. we're going to get through this. It's just, you know, this is going to be a temporary thing. So I think that really helped my mindset of like, okay, yeah, it sucks being bald, but, you know, my hair is going to come back. You know, I'm, I'm going to eventually get my energy back. You know, that's not to say there were plenty of times where I was still like frustrated and angry at my body and like not being able to do what I wanted to do. Um, but it was, you know, always came back to like, okay, this is going to be temporary. We're going to get there. Um, I also had really supportive friends and family, Mm. which is super helpful because, you know, I'm sure you know this too. Like when you have people that, you know, just love you no matter what it's like, okay, well there does like, if I'm bald or not, like, okay, those people over there might think I look weird, but you know, my friends know what I'm going through and like, you know, they don't care about that. Yeah. So, you know, that was definitely huge to help with my mindset and my just, just understanding perspective. And I think that's another big thing that has totally shifted in my life because mm. of all that I've been through is just the perspective of like, you know, when I find myself getting caught up in things that are trivial, I'm like, oh my gosh, Emily, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is right? that important. Like, right. It, that I don't find myself sometimes doing that, but like, I have the perspective to come back to it and be like, okay, this is, you know, and I, and I think I, I get caught up in that less than a lot of other people just knowing, you know, like, it's not what life is all about. Um, so, you know, that perspective of just valuing life and family and knowing that like, you never know how many days you're going to get. So appreciate what you have and be grateful for what you have. And, um, you know, even when some things aren't going right, just focus on, on what is going right. Yeah. 
great perspective. And I do want to get into your family and what you're doing right now. One last follow-up question about just the, this amazing story, you know, four times that you've gone toe to toe with cancer and quite frankly, kicked its ass, right? So it's just yeah. tremendous, amazing <laughs> stuff. You know, it really is. It's, it's a, a touching story and to have this conversation with you as I know you and just a very positive and, you know, and healthy person uh, is yeah, quite the story. So, you know, thanks for sharing it. Uh, I'm just curious about like, is there anything of like a PTSD that came with this? Like, was it like years later that you, you know, or are, are you still feeling it a little bit? Like where you're still a little bit on guard, you know, a little bit uneasy. Like, is there still a little bit of that shadow work that you're finding that you have to have to do, or have you done it? Like, what was it like to, you know, you know, five plus years later, uh, you know, uh, heal from this presumably and like what did that look like for you and what has that looked like for you yeah um yeah it was I mean it's definitely been a process for sure um I mean when I first finished up treatment you know there for sure was that feeling of like is this going to come back again I mean because I dealt with it because that's that was kind of the pattern you know it's yeah. like I do this and then I would, and um and so, and, and then like that, pro like I was saying that process of healing, you know, after treatment was done, it was frustrating. Cause it was like, mm. my body was pretty weak still. And so it was like, Oh, am I ever going to get like my stamina back and my strength back and my energy back. And, um, and it took, you know, definitely, I mean, at least a year after treatment until I started to feel like, okay, if I went running, I actually like it felt like good exercise, not mm. like I was going to keel over. And right. Like right. <laughs> pass out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a process and it was hard to be patient with my body. Um, and also I, I've dealt with a lot of late effects. So it's, it's yeah. like still, you know, I have what's called avascular necrosis from all the steroids and the mm. um, radiation and stuff. So basically what that is, is it's like, the end of the bone dies because you don't get enough nu nutrients. Wow. Okay. So, uh, both my hips replaced. I have my right knee replaced, my right wow. shoulder replaced. Yeah. And wow. I have it in my like fingers and elbows and all that. And so once I got my joints replaced, like I, I eliminated a lot of the pain because that was really painful before I got them replaced. But, um, so I'm pretty active. Like I can pretty much, you know, I ski, I hike, I cool. you know, walk and all that. Yeah. Um, but it's been like this, you know, process of where like you kind of think you're to the next place and then you hit something else. And um, same with fertility for me. I I they didn't have all the, the technology that they have now with preserving eggs and like mm. all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff that they can do now. Um, so they didn't do that for me before. And so I didn't have any eggs and um, and then I thought I was going to be able to carry, but then I like tried to like look into that and my body wasn't responding. So that was just like devastating because I knew we wanted to have kids. Mm. So we were at kind of this like loss. So it's like, it's like, you feel like you get through the heal. It's like part of the healing process. And then it's like, bam, and here yeah. it is again. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So it's, it's definitely been a process. Um, but then, you know, we found a way to have kids. We have one of my, my best friends from college, one of her friends like volunteered to be a gestational carrier for us. And we had Very an egg cool. donor and yeah. The embryo split. We got identical twin boys and <laughs> Look at that, eh? yeah. <laughs> you know, it all kind of works out in, in yeah. an amazing way and, um, and all that. But I think it is, it's like a continual journey of, of healing, you know, mentally yeah. is a big one and mentally and physically. And, and the mental piece, I, there are pieces where I've done a lot of like energy work and mm. you know, different thing, healing work. And there are times where like, you know, even a year or two ago, I've been off all treatment for 20 years now. Wow. Yeah. So I don't really think that much about it, like recurring, but sure. I, do, I do find that there's stuff where all, all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I didn't know that I was still carrying that around. Like, for example, one of the things was, you know, when I was bald and all that things, like I kind of like didn't really want to be seen because I was mm. sort of like embarrassed mm -hmm. yeah. but I also wanted people to know what I was going through and like be there so kind of this push pull of like yeah. wanting to be heard and seen yeah um, and as I was doing this work of like kind of clearing out you know energy and things that were kind of stuck feelings that were kind of stuck inside of my body 
I realized a couple of years ago, I'm like, wow, that's still in there. And mm. I see it's still showing up for me in my life mm -hmm. of like, I want to be seen and heard, but I, but I'm scared and don't want to do it. And I'm like, yes. especially as a business owner, I'm like, well, yeah. that can't, we got to get rid of that. That's yeah. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. The, that's the very interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. I love the uh, you know, the the unpacking of the mental side of it, as you know, for like the work that I do and and so forth. So I love you sharing that and you know, and it's it's it is it's a lifelong thing, isn't it? There's these these uh things that echo, you know, from childhood oftentimes well through your life and and it can be uh you know, well into like for me, it's like well into my adulthood. I'm like, wait a second. You know, and then I'm as soon as I become aware of it, that's step one. And then it's still well, you still have to do the work. Okay, how can I like like to your point? I'm like, okay, uh, like I'm a business owner, so how am I going to uh, now that I'm aware of this pattern and it's limiting my ability to do business? What am I going to do to integrate this behavior? Right, and right. Uh, so yeah, that's a I mean that's a whole other podcast we could probably do on that, yes. right? So. Yeah, great stuff. Great stuff here. So yeah, let's get into your, your business. And you mentioned like talked about your family. You got your the twin boys now, seven years old. It's amazing. Uh yeah, let's get a little bit into what you're doing with uh with the business that you're in. Uh yeah, just like what is that looking like for you these days? Yeah, so I um it was interesting, like I you know, going through all the, I went through, I I was like, oh, maybe, you know, I would want to go into the like health world, but I didn't want to really want to become a doctor. I, I just knew that wasn't really the path for me. And like even being a nurse, like that never really appealed to me. Um, and then about, gosh, it's been like 12 years now. I got um, I got introduced to the world of, of just health and wellness through kind of coaching and supporting people through um, just healing their body and understanding what they can do more naturally to assist their body through what they eat, through supplements, through exercise, all that kind of stuff. And so um, I really personally, as you know, we've talked about, like, I knew that when you don't feel good in your body, when you're, you know, exhausted or you're in pain or, you know, you're not sleeping or, you know, any of those things, like if your body is really just not feeling good, it's impossible to show up. Mm. And things that you really want to do to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. And so, so I started um, down that road of helping people with that. So that's really what I do now. I, I love working with anybody, but especially cancer survivors as they're in that, you know, recovery journey after their treatment to get their energy back and their health back and their mental health back and helping them with, you know, healing their gut and brain fog and, you know, if they are dealing with any kind of long-term pain, you know, finding relief with pain and sleep and, um, and just really doing, helping empower them to know that there's so much they can do to assist their body. Like, is their body ever going to be, you know, perfect? No, probably not, but there's so much that we can do, um, to help ourselves really heal our body and feel our best if we give our body the tools that it needs. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm doing now. And it's just been amazing. Um, just to, to see people's transformations into feeling their best so they can really show up in the world mm -hmm. and do what they're meant to be, whatever that is. Yeah. I love that. It's like, so be, do what they're meant to be regardless of, you know, uh, what, was otherwise a perceived limitation or these or things that literally were limitations right like we were talking yeah. with cancer survivors it's like i can imagine just how rewarding it is for both parties for you and the person that you're working with where like in their darkest days wondering if they're even going to get out of that hospital or or you know and uh you know or god forbid whatever might else happen to them and now you're literally talking to them about like fulfilling their life purpose and all that so i can just imagine how you know, covering like that whole spectrum from like the darkest days to like the, you know, reaching the, the brightest of goals has got to be so incredibly rewarding and keeps, I imagine it keeps you so centered and grounded in your own experience as well. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like, I think sometimes we feel like we're the only ones that have ever experienced, you know, what we're sure. experiencing. And so, yeah, to be talking to other people, like, you know, sometimes you're just like, wow, I, I thought I, I thought I went through a lot and like this person, you know, went through even more. And, right. and also on the other part of what I do is I help people like, 
financially as well with if they are like, you know, looking for a way to find extra income and maybe they, you know, want, need something more flexible they can do from home or whatever. Mm. Uh, I mentor people and I help them with starting up a business too, so that they can, you know, whether it's like a couple hundred bucks they need, or whether it's like, you know, I really want something where I can help do the same thing that I'm, you know, I'm doing and help other people with their health. So um, I help people kind of with both of those aspects of the health of feeling good in their body, but also like feeling financially like they can do what they want to do and have that flexibility. Cause I, I think there's a lot of people that, you know, they go through cancer and if they've already been in a career before, sometimes it doesn't resonate with any anymore because they're sure. like, yeah. you know, they're like, I, that doesn't fulfill me anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. they've had something happen where they can't do that job anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, if they physically can't do it. So yeah helping people with that as well. Yeah, that's important. I imagine that you have such a heightened sense of like what's going on in your body and what is good and what is bad, you know, or what is like unhealthy, we'll say, uh, as oh, far as definitely. like shows up in your body. And then you're able to articulate that to others as well, right? Because like, let's face it, a lot of uh, a lot of us live from like the head up, right? We're not super in tune with our bodies, you know, myself included at times, I'm very much in my head and is thinking of the future or a little bit of living in the past or in the past and not as present as I, uh, you know, it could be, or, or I don't want to say should, I don't like the should word, but uh, could be. Um, so, you know, I imagine there's a lot of what you've gone through that you're, and then because you have such experience with it, you're able to articulate it and help people like really do that. Okay. How is that showing up in your body? Explain the sensations, like really living from like a hard end, you know, listening to your stomach, right? Like it's been so much identified the last three to five years specifically, oh, yeah. the connection of the stomach and the, it's like the, the second brain, or some people say it's the first brain in some senses, yeah, right? So the gut, the gut right? brain the gut. connection is yes. like wickedly crazy. Like they yeah. did not realize how much stems from that. It's amazing. Right? Yeah, it really is. So yeah, in, very, very, very great story. I love, uh, you know, how successful you've been able to, you know, been able to become, um, you know, and just, yeah, having a conversation with you and having you share your story today is wonderful. Um, yeah, if somebody's wanting to reach out to you, uh, you know, if, what, what, like, you know, they're listening to this right now, I'm like, man, I, I really got to talk to Emily and, and hop on there. Like, what do you have? Do you have a, like, a, is there like a consult call or is there a way to get a hold of you? And what, what yeah, is the best absolutely. way to get a hold of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I'd be happy to set up any like free consultations. I don't know if there's a place that I can, I could post my link that you can schedule through my For sure. If yeah. you send it to me after I'll put it in the show notes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So sure. look at those notes. You can, I'll put my calendar link in there. You can schedule, um, a 30 minute free consultation. We can just, just kind of talk and figure out what it is you're looking for or help with or what you're dealing with. Um, and, uh, even if I don't know the answers or can't help, I can guide you to the right, the right person that can hopefully. Um, but either way, I just love hearing people's stories. So would love to, you know, connect with you. And then, um, I can also, um, put my email in there and my website and stuff. So there's multiple ways that you can, that you can contact me. Um, but my email is just Emily Yatsko Sandusky at gmail.com. Cool. Um, cool. But I can put that in there. Yeah, um, great. I'll definitely get that off uh, yeah. off you afterwards. If you can send me an email, I'll, I'll throw um, any anything that you want to have in the show notes, I'll put in there for sure. So okay, yeah. That's yeah. And then connect with me on Instagram too. That's yeah. another really good way. It's just emily.sandusky. Um, and just shoot me a message in there too. That's a, a great way to connect with me. Um, I've met so many incredible people and especially cancer survivors through that yeah. community. It's a great community. Very cool. I love Instagram for pretty much any like sub genre of community. There's an yeah. abundance of them there and just wonderful people, right? Like for sobriety oh. recovery, it's like, I just blew my mind. Honestly, I was like, holy, like how many people are in here and support like openly, uh, you know, championing their own stories, recovery stories. It's just a beautiful, really a beautiful thing. It really is. Yeah, it, it really is. And I, um, I've met people all over the world, which is so yeah. cool. Like, yeah. talking to someone earlier today like all the way across on the other side of the world in australia right? and somebody else in the um in uk and so yeah, yeah. It's, it's very cool yeah and it's always neat too it's like we're waking up you have your coffee in your hand it's like 4 p.m for them you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like <laughs> oh, i'm just waking day. up you're yeah. like oh it's thursday right. here and they're like oh it's yeah. friday here and yeah yeah like, it's yeah. so wild <laughs> yeah you're talking to me from the future what's going on yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Emily, one last question for you. And I, I love the connection here and uh, of like the health, the overall health. And then you're talking like money. So some people like there's so many different ways of looking at money, right? There's like some, you know, it's really dependent on how you were raised and, and how your parents' money stories were, I find. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, but there is a healthy relationship to have with money if you view it as like, however, it may be energetic or whatnot. So how is it, um, you know, I guess, what's your view on money specifically? And how does that factor into overall health? Well, I mean, the truth of it is you need money to do things in life, like eat, have a place to live. I mean, even if you're someone that's not like doesn't need a lot of things or doesn't want a lot of things like you do need it to some degree. Um, but for me, I, I just think that the more money you have, if you're a good person and I have a good heart, like we need people like that to have a lot of money so they can share and give yeah. back, do those good things in the world. So yeah. to me, I'm like, I want, you know, I want people to have the whatever money that they want to have so that they're not feeling like the stress, number one, because that's really one of the biggest stressors in life is when you feel like you don't have enough money to to eat and live. Yeah. Um, but then also like, yeah, I mean, the more money you have, the more you can you know, start causes that are near and dear mm. to your heart, give back to someone else's cause that you think they're doing good things or, mm. um, you know, or maybe even help somebody that's going through a hard time that you can just be like, you know what, here's a thousand dollars. Like it's just a gift, you know, yeah. whatever it is, you know, I think yeah. that, and then, like you said, energetically money is, is an energy. So, you know, the more that you can accept that money coming in for yourself and then also continue to share it with others. It's just going to mm. continue to bless you and bless others. Yeah. So, yeah. I love me. that. I love that. Yes. I, I knew because like, I know how I imagine one of your like core values is just overall health. And then you're having like money as part of like the coaching uh, that you do some of, I, yeah, I just wanted to hear what your perspective is on it. How like you can have healthy money essentially. Right. So yeah, oh, yeah it's really, really cool how you, uh, he went through it. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Emily. Wonderful story. I feel so blessed that you came on and shared it with us today. Um, yeah. Any, I, I love to put my guests on the spot, any parting way, uh, you know, uh, wisdom, any parting, uh, f like phrases, uh, that you'd love to, uh, to end the episode off with. Um, I don't know. Well, thank you, Matt, so much for having me. This has been so fun. Of course. Yeah, um, yeah. and gosh, parting ways. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Just see, I was probably like the parting, the part of the putting somebody on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my word for this year yes. is level up. I guess that's two words, but level up. <laughs> and so, yeah, I guess I encourage everyone to think about all the ways that they can level up, even if it's just a tiny way in all areas of life, you know, your relationships with your family or your spouse or your friends or, you know, finances, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so, cause the life is short, you know, we don't know how many days we're going to get. So yeah. don't wait for tomorrow. Ooh, I love that. We'll put a pin in that. Well, I, I do have one final synchronistic note here. Uh, I was just on a podcast about two hours ago with somebody else. And one of the themes was leveling up. We literally said that a few times. Oh my so gosh, was, no way. Yeah, I had this uh, this synchronistic uh, vibe here with, with you saying that as your parting ways, uh, piece of wisdom. And yeah, the whole, you know, tomorrow is not promised just to, you know, paraphrase what you said for sure definitely resonating with me and I'm sure resonate with everybody else listening to it. So again, thank you so much, Emily. You're always welcome to come back if we want to do a more topical podcast on something. If you have anything else uh, going on that you care to promote or whatever else, the door is always open for you to come back. Sounds awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you.